Hello everyone. Uh, today we will be discussing an experiment of diffraction at single slit. This is the apparatus for the single slit experiment. Our aim is to study the intensity distribution due to diffraction from single slit and to determine the slit width D. The apparatus we will be using here is an optical bench which is a uh, one, uh, one and half meter long bench on which all the things are mounted. Helium neon laser which is a red laser in our case, a rectangular slit of few microns and a screen on which we will see the pattern after the diffraction and a photo cell which is a detector which converts the light into current and this current is read in a microammeter. This microammeter has different ranges so according to our current we adjust it. So let us first see what diffraction is. So the diffraction uh, of light refers to a phenomena that occurs when a light wave encounters an obstacle or opening. It is defined as the bending of waves around the corners of an obstacle or through an aperture into the region of geometrical shadow of the obstacle or aperture. The bending is more pronounced when a wave from a coherent source encounters a slit or aperture that is comparable in size to the wavelength of light. Uh, so here we will be seeing that how the diffraction pattern is formed. So uh, this is our slit, this is the monochromatic source, light from it falls on the uh, lens to make it parallel and then this parallel beam falls on the slit uh, a, 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 b. Now let us say that when a light wave falls on A, A, B, uh, each point of this wave will behave as a fresh source of disturbance and will send waves in all possible direction. So some waves they interfere here at this point, they go straight and interfere at this point. Here we will get the maximum intensity because they all are meeting constructively. Then some are meet, uh, bending at an angle theta and uh, reaching at this point and uh, the intensity at this point will be decided on the path difference of the light wave interfering. So uh, depending on the path difference, uh, the light wave may interfere constructively forming a maxima or destructively forming a minima. So we get this type of pattern. This uh, pat The width of this pattern depends on the uh, distance between the screen and the slit also. Uh, so that will decide the width of the central maxima. So here the graph shows the intensity of single slit interference versus position. We can see that the uh, width of the central maxima is largest as compared to the other maximas and it is more intense also. So the formula used here is that the slit width is given by d is equal to 2d lambda upon beta where capital D is the distance between the slit and the screen and lambda is the wavelength of the helium neon laser which in our case is 632.8 nanometer. Beta is the bit width of the central maxima. The first minima on either side of central maxima is given by the condition that is d sin theta is equal to m lambda. So now let us perform the experiment. This is our experimental setup. So let us start with here, this is our laser, this is the laser source. We must switch on the laser at least 15 minutes before we start our experiment. This is the stand for the uh, single slit and we can put the single slit in this slot uh, like this. Then this is the screw with which we can uh, change the height of the, uh, the slit and this uh, with the help of this uh, screw we can change the inclination of it. Now we come to the detector part. So this is the detector and which is again have the arrangement for the changing the angle as well as the height of it. Connected to the detector we have this micrometer screw arrangement. So uh, this is the main scale, this is circular scale. When we move this, the our detector moves in one direction. So suppose we are moving in clockwise direction, it is moving in the um, uh, left side. And when we are moving it anti-clockwise, it will be moving in right side. So this uh, detector output is given to the micrometer. And this micrometer has uh, this display 
and has different ranges so now let us switch on the power uh, supply to get the laser light and this falls this falls on the slit and we get this type of pattern on the screen you can see I am moving this screen towards the slit. So you can see that the size of the central maxima and other maxima is decreasing. We observe a reverse pattern when we take the uh, detector away from the screen. So uh, now let us take the readings of it. So as we can see that the, when light falls on the detector it gives output on the microammeter. So uh, we can change the range, se select the range according to our current. We have different ranges here, yes. And this detector, uh, now what we do is, uh, this is micrometer screw and we change the position, take the position on the micrometer screw and then take the reading of the microammeter. And we go on doing this we have to move this only along in one direction otherwise there will be error and then we take it from other side to this side and continuously take the reading note one thing that we have to take a number of readings to get the actual shape of the intensity curve we can see uh, with the help of a screen we can uh, put our detector at say second minima and then start taking the readings and go on the say on the left side suppose on this pattern we can see that we are taking from the this second minima and going to the other second minima that is second minima on the other side and then come back to the same thing again i am repeating that we must take a number of readings so that we get the exact intensity pattern otherwise we, we may miss some of the points and the curve will not come out to be the same so this is the only thing we have to do that change the position of the uh, micrometer screw and take the reading to change it again then take the reading and so on as close as possible then plot a graph intensity versus distance and uh, note down the distance between the two first minimas on either side of the central maxima that will decide the width of the central maxima so this is the micrometer screw in zoom position we can see that we have one uh, main scale and this is the circular scale so we can take the reading as we take in case of screw gauge that is the um, uh, the reference line uh, on the reference line so whatever main scale reading we take and then whatever division of circular scale matches with this reference line we take that as the circular scale reading and then we can uh, multiply the circular scale division with the least count and then add it to the main scale reading that will give the position of the detector this type of pattern we observe on the screen as we can see that this is a central maxima followed by the secondary maximas on either side of it the intensity of central maxima is maximum and it goes on decreasing on either side of the central maxima so this is the width of the central maxima so here we have the observation table the wavelength of helium neon laser we have used is 632.8 nanometer in uh, first column we are uh, noting the position of the detector and in second the corresponding current in microammeter so with the help of this set of reading we plot a graph intensity versus uh, distance and with that uh, we measure the distance between the two first minimas on either side of the central maxima to get the uh, width of the central maxima beta uh, this is the uh, in the second column we have distance between the slit and the screen and with the help of this beta and d we can find out the width of the slit the whole procedure can be repeated for other distance between slit and the uh, screen here are the results the intensity distribution due to diffraction at a single slit is, is of this type we have central maxima followed by the uh, secondary maximas on either side 
width of central maxima is maximum uh, as compared to the other maximas and the intensity is also higher the let us see the precautions we have to follow first of all the laser beam should not penetrate into the eyes as it may damage the eyes permanently the photo detector should be as away from the slit as possible so that we get a uh, <coughs> measurable width of central maxima the laser should be operated at a constant voltage and the laser should be started at least 15 minutes before starting the experiment and finally the scale of vernier should be rotated slowly and should be moved only in one direction to avoid the backlash error that's all about the experiments thanks for watching thank you